What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about radio buttons in template-driven forms. So radio buttons are another one of those topics that don't seem very important, but are absolutely crucial. It's crucial to know the difference between a radio button, a checkbox, and a select dropdown. If you can master those three things, you've you've gotten a very powerful skill into your hand in your hands you've gotten you pretty much have like a weapon of being able to select things in a gui <laughs> okay i'm getting carried away but you get what i'm saying but okay so here's how you remember what a radio button is in your town or in your city i'm sure that you had some kind of pool um, you went to when you were a kid and this pool, usually these community pools have slides or they have diving boards and I'll draw like a diving board here and <laughs> that is a terrible diving board, but I think you guys get the picture. Whenever you try to get on, if you try to get on the diving board with another person on it, the lifeguard blows the whistle and the lifeguard will say, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. That's the whole entire idea of a radio button. A radio button is for when you need to select only one of one thing and there are only certain options that you can choose from. You can't choose more than one option and it's very good for things like Pokemon type, right? Um, we're about to start working on Pokemon type, but I'm going to teach you how to spot a radio button and how to think in terms of a radio button. So first thing that you will always see whenever you have a radio button is you're going to have the type and the type's going to be radio. And that's going to be what actually creates the real radio button, but it doesn't know what to do. Like I always say, computers don't really know um, what you want them to do. So you have to be very, very explicit. So how does the radio button even know the whole entire idea behind a radio button is to send data to a server? We need to, whenever we're filling out a form, the whole entire idea is to send data back to the server. And whenever we have these inputs, it's important to think of inputs as almost like JSON. They're JSON in a GUID form. That's a good way to remember inputs. They're just think of if we just we could just put json i guess like in some kind of strange world where people everybody's a web developer we could just put straight json into the html page but we don't do that we need inputs so that we can have a name and we can have a value so i'm just going to kind of highlight this in pink because i want you to pay extra extra attention to name so let's let's highlight all the names so notice all the names are the same. Qu funny coinky dink. Why is that? Because like I said, you can only choose one. And if you can only choose one, the value is going to be different. So here is the value. Just pay, don't pay attention to anything that's not highlighted. Anything that's highlighted, you want to pay attention to. And the t type is very simple. We've already got that figured out. Type is just what turns it into a radio button. Here is where things get a little crazy. Here's where I'm gonna put a red check mark so people pay more attention. This is where things get a little crazy. So whichever one that we click, so say if we clicked this one and it was a radio button and we are, this is our imaginary radio button and we fill it in, we click the radio button and we click this one, like let's just per say, for instance, we click this one. What is going to be sent back to the server? What piece, of, how is this data going to be structured? It's gonna look like this. It's going to, it's gonna look literally, it's going to be JSON. So it's going to be the first property is going to be favorite language, and then we're gonna have a colon, and then our value is going to be HTML. And it's going to send it back in that form. So just imagine, just taking this don't worry about don't worry about this and literally just take from that html right there just imaginary mark out the value and then put a semicolon there and then 
that's what you have. This is this is going to be the property, and this is what these are what are going to be sent back to the server. Anyway, I hope that that illustrated it very clearly for you. <laughs> Okay, so let's start actually working towards programming this. We've been talking for quite a while, and it's about time that we actually start doing some coding. So, first thing is you need to be aware that the radio button needs to be inside of a form. A form is a very peculiar data structure in the world of HTML and it's important to know that in order for any of this to actually even work it has to be in a form. It sounds kind of simple and maybe I am going you know maybe I'm thinking that you guys are a lot you know newer than you really are but I just figured I would tell people that so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go type and remember it has to be radio. If you put anything else in here if you put text it's not gonna work, or if you put number or anything else in there, it has to be radio, otherwise not gonna work. Okay, so then we go here, and remember, this is, the name is an important, important part. This is going to be, so here's a good way to conceptualize it, and I talked about this already briefly, but we're gonna go into here. So this is the name, this is the value name value and this one already has a name so name this is the name this is the value name and then we're going to go down here we're going to make our value so value if this were regular html we wouldn't have those brackets but because it's angular we're everything's going to be in a bracket so we're going to go ng and then we're going to go model so ng model and then this is what's going to actually do the binding because something has to tell the code behind that um, it needs to be binded, otherwise Angular does not know. Then we're gonna go here and we're just gonna go ahead and close this out. So with, it, with radio inputs, you have to be aware of what you are um, trying to allow the user to select. And in this case, our property is a boolean. Pokemon dot is cool is a boolean, and we can check this. If you don't know what something is, just go right click, go to definition, and you can go ahead and here, and you can actually see what it is because we have TypeScript. It's one of the great reasons to actually uh, code with TypeScript. So then we're gonna go do the sa same thing as we did above, and we're gonna go in here. We're just gonna go label. We could do a four, you could do a four if you want to, but I'm not going to. This is just, we're just out here learning. Doesn't, no need to be too precise. So here, we're gonna go in here, then we're going to go, once again, radio. Then we're gonna go here, name. It's going to be is cool. That's bec that is the property that we are trying to send back to the server. That is the property that we are trying to send back to our database our JSON database it's a it's a real I'd say it's a real database it's not um, the fanciest but JSON DB is a database nonetheless <laughs> okay so we're gonna have false and then next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and wire up that ng model so in here and Pokemon Pokemon dot is cool and you could totally make this two-way binding if you wanted to just remember, if you want to include two-way binding, it's totally up to you. You can do either either one. Okay, so here, can't bind value since it isn't a known proper. Okay, accidentally. So this is this has to be input. I was spelling that wrong. And we can just close that out. And I can put a label up here. Go ahead, get rid of that. And I spelled input wrong. <laughs> I'm having all types of problems today and I'm going to get rid of that parentheses and we should be good to go. So, <clears throat> actually let's put an event handler. Let's go ahead, let's uh, practice our event handler. So, ng model changed is another, so behind the scenes, Angular is tracking whenever your model is changing. And whenever you want to fire off an event, 
when this model changes, Angular is like, hey, I got you. I know exactly what you want. Whenever this input changes or whenever there is some type of uh, change in the model, it will fire off an event. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go toggle is cool, and I'm going to go ahead and pass in this event right here. My voice is starting to get hoarse. Okay, so next thing, we're gonna go here, and we're going to make our toggle is cool. Just like this. And we're gonna go in here, <clears throat> and it's going to pass back an event object. These event objects are so finicky. It's not good practice. If you, okay, here's, a, here's another good pro tip. <clears throat> if you're ever in a coding interview and you can spot the difference when code is bad, that's also okay too. It's okay to know, it's okay to write bad code if you know your code is bad. Don't quote me on that. But that is a philosophy I live by every day. <laughs> okay. okay, so we're going to go in here. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and toss in our object. And let's just log this thing out and see what, it, see what we got. <clears throat> and it's going to take a while to set up. So let's see. Okay, so we have our model. And we also... Okay, so it works and it's logging it, but we don't have any labels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back in here and add a quick label to it. And Pokemon is cool. And now I hope you kind of get the picture of why we use radio buttons. You can use them with uh, bulls, you can use them with numbers, you can literally use them for anything, but in our case, specifically, a Pokemon cannot be cool and not cool at the same time. And also, this would work too if you had a um, po Pokemon type. Pokemon type would be another good one because a Pokemon cannot be more than one type. So, very important. So Pokemon is not cool, and our form, this is our form model right here, and this is our um, model that is in TypeScript. So this is our TypeScript model, and this is our UI model. And as you can see, it is being manipulated on the form side. It's not being manipulated on the model side. We just have that console log, but if you wanted to, you could easily just switch it by putting in this dot Pokemon dot is cool is equal to the opposite. What you would do is you would do this. I just remembered that you could do this right here and that would work. And what it will do is each time you toggle is cool, it will um, negate the Pokemon is cool. So if you want to go back and add that, I don't, un don't understand why you would want to, you can totally do that. But that is going to be our video on radio buttons. I hope that you guys learned a lot. I hope that you stick around for the next video where we're going to be talking about checkboxes. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. And as always, thank you for watching.